a couple of more things I'd like to cover about the wall. Um, firstly, I want to point out uh, that uh, there's a there's an aspect in ArchiCAD called grouping. So when we're using uh, a couple of these uh, different geometric methods of constructing walls, um, certain things happen. So for example, when I use uh, this method, um, you'll notice that um, I, I've used this method to create this wall. So basically what I did is is uh, every time I click my mouse, and by the way, if I want to keep that wall straight, I can just hold the shift key. You notice how it locks it straight. And I can relatively quickly, and again horizontally, if I almost have it stra straight, hold the shift key down, it locks it on a straight line. And so I can relatively quickly create a wall. If I wanted to line this wall up with this wall, I can, you notice the cursor is like a pencil, it, it will click on the end of the point that I started with, and then the last line, I can also click back to the starting point. And it creates a rectilinear wall like this, but because I was using this method, what it has done, it has automatically grouped all the walls together as one entity. Now. I can temporarily suspend that grouping uh, down here in the um, in this box. There's this little symbol, uh, enable or suspend groups. So if I uh, switch that to uh, th this alternative, what happens is each leg of that wall is selectable, delete, and I can then edit that wall or that part of that wall. Okay, now just want you to understand how grouping works. Basically, um, when things are grouped together, and if I uh, put it back, uh, grouping, you can see the handles, that is the uh, little symbols that denote the ends of the entities that I'm drawing, are an empty circle. Okay, They're colored to indicate that that's a group. If I select another grouped uh, elements, the little circles are a different color to symbolize the fact that this group and this group are different groups. Okay, When things are not grouped together, and I'll just select this wall, the, um, the little handles that are at the ends of the elements are black and solid. So this has no grouping, this is a group, Okay, and this is a different group. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to point out how grouping works. In the pull down menus, grouping is here under the edit menu. I can also suspend the groups um, and I can also select objects and group them all together. So if I wanted to, I could make all of these one single group by going to grouping and then grouping them all together. So that means if I select one aspect or one element in the group, it all gets selected. If I want to change something, what I can do is just temporarily suspend groups down here, and I can then edit one element. So I could delete that, and if I wanted to, I could reinstate groups, and then the whole thing behaves as a whole again. Okay, so that's grouping. Um, you need to have grouping suspended if you want to edit any part of those elements. So for example, another thing I'd like to show you is how to edit things in the 3D window. So I can generate F5 in the 3D window and generate something like this. Uh, as I showed you before, you can see the elements that I've been uh, creating. I can, if the elements are suspended, I can select one aspect of the, uh, well, one element and you notice I can edit that element in the 3D window. So for example, I click on the end and a pet palette appears. Okay, I can stretch the base of that wall down. Okay, I can even draw in this window uh, just like any, uh, any of the uh, tools will draw in the 3D window as well. Okay, um, the cursor by the way is got gravity on, that is it's automatically 
um, reacts to the surface of the mesh that I'm working on so that if I start to draw it automatically puts the base of the wall onto the surface of that mesh okay. but you can edit and stretch the length of walls so I can click out here and use uh, different different uh, one choices in the uh, pet palette to change the angle if I want to keep it straight I just hold the shift key it locks on that axis and I can stretch the length of that wall so each one of these uh, options in the pet palette gives me different choices okay the pet palettes by the way in all the windows you can see in the 2d window if I wanted to create um, a typical floor plan I can start at one corner um, remember that the active edge is best on the outside of the wall so um, I can hit uh, get almost uh, if I want to draw a, a vertical line I get almost vertical hold the shift and it constrains it uh, vertically I can uh, hit the uh, tab key on the keyboard and it highlights the distance and let's say I want a wall three meters long I hit enter and I can just keep working my way around the project let's make this one two meters and so on um, tab again let's make this one four meters and I can keep working my way around a typical floor plan drawing all the external walls um, to end a wall you simply uh, click the start of the wall okay again uh, start from where you were or if you want to drop a line uh, you double click the, uh, the cursor and it drops the line and you can finish a wall um, I think that's about all I wanted to cover with walls um, I'd like you to experiment with walls you can set up uh, all of these things relatively quickly oh one other thing uh, you, I do also want to point out where you can if if you just so happen not to see this little pet palette that's following my cursor around that's controlled by one of the tools in the toolbar which is this one here and I just wanted to point that out to everyone if that is switched off then as you draw the palette is not there okay and if you switch that back on you'll notice the palette appears okay um have a play with those things